The bad boy of StarCraft II, Greg Idrafields, takes on the baddest tournament there ever was, the GSL. Idra spawns up here in the top left of Jungle Basin, an extremely congested and claustrophobic map, good for Terran and Protoss against Zerg. Facing him is Chicken Combo, the creative Terran player who we've seen do some off-the-wall stuff including BC Rush, Proxied, and Nuke Rush, which is just absolutely wild, especially in the 2010 era when a lot of people were really just doing rudimentary rushes, your three racks builds, your two port banshee, your six racks marine, really simple goofy stuff. And almost all of that was opened up with the two racks bunker rush of some kind, whether feigned or committed. Jungle Basin had a pocket base, and the pocket base had backdoor rocks behind it. And that might seem like it makes it good for Zerg, but really the third base is impossible to take. You either have a corner, which is easily pushed, and has a lot of weird tight corridor choke action going on, or the base is in the middle, which is just begging Terran to make a PF third at and rally all their stuff out. Zerg wants these big rangy maps where they can take bases away from their opponents, potentially going up into the corners if they really want to. Think of Metalopolis taking your base in the other main. And we can see Chicken Combo going for what was a lethally powerful rush here, the walling in of the Zerg player. There were a ton of different variations on this, but essentially what you need to know is they all involved two barracks, they all involved blocking the Zerg in because the Roach had three range and there was no Ravager, so the Zerg had to basically baneling bust out in some ludicrously inefficient trade or go for a coin flippy Nidus. There were, there were really no good options, but you saw this a lot on rushy maps like Delta Quadrant, but maps like this where there was a pocket base were few and far between, so this isn't as good. Is the real strength of this rush and this style of rush, whether you're blocking the Zerg in with the racks themselves or bunkers, is you want to prevent them from being able to defend their natural. So this is sort of a walling in, preventing Zerg from leaving or countering, really limiting them in the early game, but you, can, you don't really plan on stopping their natural in a traditional sense of those first couple buildings go down and that's what's going to get it done for you. This is more of a, just a very forward, in-your-face, brazen proxy two racks, and he's just going to try to get a bunker up on the high ground and abuse. Notice he has to lift up a racks to get his stuff in because it is a full wall, and he wants to get the SCVs in there too. Idra almost killed that, but had to run away because if you lose your first few links and you don't have a natural to rally from, it's just so razor's edge, it's so easy for the Terran to snowball on you because we can see Idris trying to tech up into Roaches, and he's essentially going one base Roach, he knew this cheese was coming, and this is still brutal for Idra because it might, you might think, well, the Terran's kind of committing a lot to this, he's not really teching up at home, despite the fact he's getting an orbital. Bunker salvage for 100%, and there is no Ravager, so Idra has to commit virtually everything to stop and break out here, but for the Terran player, he can just pick up and leave any time he wants, and when you consider the wall in, if he's going mech or air behind it, he can legitimately hold Idra in his base for like 30 whole seconds between the, the, the bunker of nonsense and all the wall in and stuff. So we can see Idra still doesn't have his natural. It's such a low econ, shitty scenario for Zerg to be in because Zerg obviously wants to be making double drones at this time. The last thing they want to be is trying to break out of the freaking main, and we see Idris just going to go for it. He knows he's behind, and he's trying to sponge up some hits there with the Lings, but there are a plethora of Marines left here, about 10 Marines, I would say. It's eight on the product, or the unit tab, rather, but two are coming up, and this is rough for Idra. Remember, he still doesn't have a natural. He's falling behind, just as the, the nature of the game going along is. He's right at the same worker count as the Terran and has really no hope of pressing forward in that regard. This isn't like, as we see, him pressing forward with Roaches. Now that his couple other Roaches finish, he's going to try to DPS down the bunker. And whenever Roaches shoot so slow and do such terrible DPS, having a <laughs> SCV or two is just a huge pain in the ass. And we can see there was a little bit of a hole in the wall as he wanted to keep rallying forward. And he will just lift up because of that. But our Terran player really wasn't teching up at home. 
if we look as though he did have the gas because if we look at modern two raxes at this time the factory is already done and this is a great example of what I'm always harping on about about how even though it looks like Zerg is oh well you're always talking about how good Terran is and the Zerg wins look at how easy this was for the Terran player to execute and how badly he fucked it up like he could have had a factory making a tank at home already and he doesn't even have the first bunker up at home so this is how powerful Terran was and how ludicrously easy it was to win games because we can see he was on the verge of beating Idra just by building bunkers at the top of his ramp and he fucking loses so I would dare to say that chicken combo would have been better just going for a macro game or a creative strategy there because you're really not putting Zerg in a, the same precarious spot you are when you do that style of rush when there's a pocket base and it just says well I got Harwalled in on Jungle Basin and BC rushed and I went 2-0. And there's definitely a sense of like, well, I won, but it's going to be really hard to win when I have to play someone a bit better like MVP. And I want to show you guys something funny that shows you how committed I am to the game. Look at this old esoteric VOD with less than 200 views. It has one like, it's mine. And look at the one comment from six years ago. Who are these casters? And not to knock these guys, whoever the hell they are. Presumably Tasteless and Artosis were at like a big weekend event, but this just goes to show, yeah, I really do care about the game and have for a long time, six freaking years ago, so enjoy it guys, sub for more, check out the playlist.